am I Reister or am I wrong? The college football playoff committee put out their third iteration of their rankings. And at the end of it, I felt like I was being gaslit for the second week in a row. The Staples Center is changing its name to crypto.com. And this feels illegal. Um, There was a list of the top 10 female singers of all time. It was absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to give you the actual truth. Um, The Kyle Rittenhouse trial is going, uh, the jury is deliberating. And, um, but there is a bigger question. I was asked, why does this matter to black people so much? And I will explain to you why. And Laura Ingram uh, gets trolled or is she trolling us on the best of social media? I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amston. And this is Reister or Wrong, the intersection where sports, business, society, and pop culture meet the truth. Absolute fire on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Facts only. Make sure you check your feelings at the door because no BS is allowed. We keep it 100. Uh, We also need you to make sure that you share the podcast. Share it, leave a five-star rating, tell a friend about it. If you're watching it on YouTube, thumbs up, like it, share it, leave a comment, all of those things, they are all great to keep growing the show. And you guys, you can always get a hold of us, 818-293-7547. That's 818-293-7547. Or you can shoot us an email. I'm mad. I M M A D at unafraidshow.com. All right. So, Ralph, the beginning, the college football playoff committee put out their rankings. You have Georgia one, Alabama two, Oregon three, Ohio State four, Cincinnati five, Michigan six, Michigan State seven, Notre Dame eight, Oklahoma State nine, and Wake Forest ten. Did they get it right? I mean, the easy answer is no, right? Because uh, especially if you're using your standard of head-to-head needs to be the end-all be-all, then they continue to have issues with Michigan and Michigan State. And it's hard to take it seriously unless that's rectified. Um, I think that they they were proven correct. Maybe having Oklahoma being the lowest-ranked undefeated team, I think, the distance that they dropped Oklahoma, especially behind Wake Forest, kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, but I think we're officially down to nine. We, I, I think we had it at 10 last week, and now there are nine legitimate contenders for, for four spots. Because I draw the line at Wake Forest. I don't think there's a single thing that they can do even if they went out to get in. You don't, um, you don't, you don't think so? I, well, I don't. see, I don't think that they can get in on their own accord. I think that if they finish 12 and one with an ACC championship, that they would need some chaotic things to happen, that they would need the big 10 to, for all those teams to finish with two losses, which is entirely possible or have Wisconsin win the big 10 championship. Um, or you could have, you know, and, and then have Oregon lose and Cincinnati lose. I think that that's a scenario to where, Wake Forest can get in as well as Cincinnati. And then imagine that like Cincinnati, Wake Forest, Georgia, and, you know, and, and who, oh, oh, and Notre Dame. Imagine that. I mean, it's, it's certainly possible, I guess, but the astronomically improbable that Wake Forest gets consideration to be one of the top four teams, um, in all of college football, even with just one loss, I would put a two, three loss team in front of Wake Forest. If they're a better team with a better resume, if like, let's say that Oregon goes 11 and two, like, let's say they lose to Utah, turn around, beat Utah in yeah. the Pac-12 championship. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have Wake Forest ahead of Oregon, even at, even at 12 and one, because I've seen both teams play. And I think you have to, take that into account but i think that head-to-heads should definitely matter i think that they got it right with oregon being ahead of ohio state right now but they don't have it right with michigan being ahead of michigan state no that makes sense Uh, see 
And that's the thing that, that makes me feel gas gaslit. It's not just the fact that Michigan is in front of Michigan State. It's the fact that the committee sits up there and says, listen, it'll all and, and the ESPN talking heads. You have, um, you know, David Pollack, Herb Street, all those dudes. I like them. So, so this is no diss on them. But they are gaslighting me. When they're like, listen, don't worry about it, people. It'll all work itself out. Why does it need to work itself out when we, when the committee is tasked at getting it right that week? So why do we right. have to is wait that, for the, it to work out? And doesn't Michigan State play Ohio State this weekend? Yes. So all of the defenses that they've made of Michigan State not being better than Michigan would kind of look ridiculous if Michigan State beats Ohio State, correct? Correct. So that, I mean, the there's a lot of leverage for this to go Ohio state's way just to not embarrass the entire committee, because there are people like us who remember the things that they say and all of the, you know, uh, kicking up dust over Michigan state, not being ranked ahead over of, of, of Michigan is going to uh, be a lot more uh, relevant. If Michigan state gets the win um, against Ohio state, which it's possible. You know, I, I don't know if it's probable. I do think Ohio State's the better team. But if they manage to pull it off, then then how are they going to backdate justify two straight weeks? They'll, they'll say that's just it working itself out. Well, like, no, you, well, got, they, you guys had the most obvious piece of information, which is head to head. Well, and, and that's where they say the committee, Gary Bart, the committee chair, Gary Barta, Barta, sat there in his chair last night and said, well, you know, we looked at all the statistics Michigan's better in all the statistics. Who the F cares, dude? If you listen to the statistics and these S&P Plus models and all of that, Oregon was a 14-point dog going to the big house and beat uh, Ohio State. Ralph, if they played today, according to the computers, guess what the point spread would, would be? Probably the same. Yes. Like, how, how does that mentally make sense? And, and and then and then uh Chris, Chris Falica, the bear, you 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 see him on college game day, all this stuff, smart guy, better, all of this stuff. He put out the remaining strength of schedule for the college football playoff top ten. Georgia five, Alabama one, Oregon twelve, Ohio State seven, Cincinnati forty six, Michigan nine, Michigan State three. Notre Dame 85, Oklahoma State 10, Wake Forest 11. All right? That sounds fine until you realize that th this is why I don't get down with the computer models. I do not get down with them at all because this is the type of stuff that they do. So you have, they say that Bama has the number one schedule. Okay, they have 7-3 and three Arkansas and 6-4 and four Auburn left. Okay, fine. That's a that's a tough schedule out out the door, right? Right. But then you have they say Georgia has the fifth toughest schedule. They have Charleston Southern, who's four and five, and an FCS team, and and Georgia Tech, who's three and seven. How is that possible, Ralph? And then they have Ohio State number seven, and they have Michigan State and Michigan left. I don't know. I don't, just I just watch the games, watch the game. Your computer models are fine, but when you, the most obvious thing in the world is the fact that like the, they played each other, the results are the results. Like we're overcomplicating this. No, but bro, why? we we why do we get so deep into the woods on these me metrics? They're like by all the metrics, they say that this team is better. But then when we get, but like how many times do we have to see results that bust up your metrics to like not take these things as gospel? Right. Right. And this is college football, not the NFL. So it can't be like, you know, when I'm doing my power rankings for, for the NFL, I do take into account such and such was injured. So I'm not going to take this loss or that loss seriously. Um, that type of thing comes into play. But in college football, when you don't get that opportunity, when the game is the game and you just got to roll with whoever you had, then that, then you, you are what you did.
That's yes. just who you are. But if the college football playoff committee can come in and look at Michigan State and say, we know you beat Michigan, they're still better. They're you. still better than you. We don't yeah. care. And I mean, it, it would be different if, if Appalachian State upsets Michigan, right? right? Then you could say, all right, Michigan wins that nine times out of ten probably. Okay, they're, they're still better, right? Because they have more yeah. talent, they'll win more, more times. But how can you possibly say that when, yes, Michigan has a little more talent, but it ain't that big of a gap? Yeah. Hey, so I'm not the biggest Big 12 fan, but explain to me how their conference championship works without having divisions. Is it just okay. the top two teams yes. play? Yes, yes, yes. The top two, two, yes, the top two teams based upon record, and then they get into tiebreakers. It goes down to point differential, all sorts of stuff. They have all sorts of tiebreakers that that is going to happen if um Mich- if Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma which would actually take Oklahoma out of the Big 12 championship. Assuming that Baylor wins. Correct. So if Baylor wins out and Oklahoma only loses to Oklahoma State, then Oklahoma would be taken out via tiebreaker. Yes, because Baylor beat Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Oklahoma has to be rooting for... Baylor to lose at Kansas State? No, 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 no. Oklahoma just has to win. Like, they control their own destiny. But I'm saying that it would allow them to, even if they lost to Oklahoma State, to get Oklahoma Correct. State again the next week. Correct. Okay. Uh, Oklahoma State might be a little bit overlooked here. Their defense is good. And not just Big 12 good, but, like, nationally good. Well, why do you, why do you think that See, like, th- this is where we get into the name brand beauty contest thing. Because Oklahoma State, they have Sanders at quarterback. He's like a 13th year senior. They have, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I swear, he's been there for like 50 years. And they have a bunch of tough, gritty nose guys. They don't have a ton of high recruits, but they mm-hmm. are a well-coached football team. This is what a lot of programs should aspire to be is you're not trying to compete for a national championship every single year, but, but when you get the chance, you know, every three, four years, when, when you put together the right class, they stay in school, it works out. Then, then you push the, the envelope. Like, and that, so you got to be happy with nine and three and then 10 and two and then a eight and four. Oh, snap. 12 and one. Like, right. That's what you got to be cool, cool with. I, I, I agree with you. I think that, uh, I just, I, you know, we, we keep hearing year after year, there's nobody that plays defense in the big 12, but we got one this year. Yep. They've only given up 23 points in the last three weeks. And Baylor plays defense too. They do. Yeah. This is going to be, it's going to be interesting finish to the season. Do you think it'll have any impact whatsoever? Even if Oklahoma State wins out, do you think it'll have any impact on the top four? Hmm. Like they would have to knock people's doors off. And if they and if they did, I could see a scenario where that happens. Would they get more respect for beating Oklahoma twice or for beating Oklahoma and then Baylor, assuming Baylor doesn't lose again? Yeah. Yep. Which one? Oh, um, would you, if you were the committee, would you rather see them beat Oklahoma and then prove it again the next week or beat Oklahoma and then beat Baylor who beat Oklahoma? Because right now they're ranked ninth. Yeah, yeah but they, they, they already beat Baylor a couple weeks ago too. Well, about f- six weeks ago. Right. So I just it, don't know which one has more value for them at this point, which scenario. Yeah, probably. Uh, Probably Baylor, just because they're going to be ranked higher. So I think that that gives you m- more cachet for a potential slide in if you beat a better football team. Um, all right. And no- Notre Dame can't. Notre Dame's in that one weird position where they can't really do anything. Because yeah, yeah, Cincinnati they, losing hurts them. Correct. They need all sorts of chaos to happen. 
I mean, yeah. like they would have to have Cincinnati in the playoff first for them to get in, which Correct. is wild. Correct. And then having Cincinnati and Notre Dame in. But this committee, th- 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 but that's the thing, George, is that this committee is saying that like, if a situation ends up where Notre Dame gets in at four and Cincinnati's out at five, even if Cincinnati's undefeated and even if they have the head to head win over Notre Dame, maybe some computer. Bruh, that'll be the wild. Otherwise. That will be the wildest. Bro, people will go crazy. That will that will send off fights. Um, uh, speaking of fights, Sham Sharania sent out a tweet last night and I was like, no, this, this has got to be illegal. Got to be illegal. The Staples Center in L.A., one of the most iconic arenas, is being renamed from the Staples Center to Crypto.com Arena. I mean, I would have rather they called it the Crypto Center, the Crypto.com Center. Like, dude, this felt illegal. The Staples Center has been the Staples Center since, what, 98 or 99? Bro, this over 20 years for naming rights. It's been named that so long, and it's been so long since I even stepped foot into a Staples that I I consistently forget that it's even the name of a company. Like, like it just seems like, oh, like Tiger Stadium, Staples Center. Like, it, the Staples Center, now we're supposed to call it Crypto.com Arena. Bro, who's going to say that? Yeah, uh, I mean, as somebody who still calls the Phoenix Suns Arena America West, which it hasn't been for 20-some years, um, I can guarantee you people are still just going to say Staples Center. But it is funny to me that Lakers taking money from the highest bidder when it's like Wish.com and Crypto.com. Dude. <laughs> like, as in, I lost all my money on at Crypto.com, and so now I can only afford to shop at Wish.com. Bro. Oh, oh, okay. So they actually changed their their jersey name to Bing Bing Boingo, or uh, <laughs> I don't even know who who it is, dude. I mean, it's it it was like when the Warriors got their jersey sponsor from Rakuten. I was like, what the hell is Rakuten? And but now I know what it what it is. I I don't use it. But then when the Lakers got wish, I was like, bro, is this like a charity? Then I looked it up and saw what it was. But now um, their new Jersey sponsor is, you know, I was like, okay, whatever, man, whatever. It's, it's (laughs) Bibingo. It's a, it's a Korean food company. Okay. Are you, uh, does this, uh, change your i mean do you have brand allegiance as a lakers fan you're going to use crypto.com instead of your your other crypto trading platforms uh absolutely not dude that's i mean i do use crypto.com ironically but uh because coinbase started when once coinbase decided to go public i was like nah i'm out so um i you know i'm still a i want to be off the grid as much as possible kind of <laughs> kind of kind of guy but yeah, because yeah. you see companies like uh, uh, Venmo, they just sent out that big notification that they're tracking your stuff for, for, for tax purposes. So yeah, like, yeah bro, uh, don't track me. <laughs> track All the off the radar stuff is now definitely very much on the radar. Exactly, don't track me. Track track yourself. But this feels, this feels wrong, Ralph. Yeah, I mean, I get, I get it. You just t- you you get the highest bidder. Um, you know, I know uh, how many people made fun of the Arizona Cardinals for taking on University of Phoenix as a 20 year partner. Um, w- when at the time it was seen as kind of a huge insult because the city of Glendale gave the Arizona Cardinals so much money. And then they named the they named the stadium after uh, a college named after a city that the stadium's not in. <laughs> but like, you know, it but then over time you build up sort of a brand and partnership affinity and then people forget and then you go to change it and everybody gets confused again. So now the university of Phoenix stadium is now state farm stadium. And it took people a couple of years to, you know, to, to get to the point where they could. um, So it's like changing the name of the Sears tower in Chicago. Right. 
Right. But, you know, people are going to whatever they knew it as is what they're going to continue to call it. Yeah. Um, which is why a lot of you probably have older relatives that refuse to say the name Caitlyn Jenner. Yep. It, it's now called the Willis Tower. Okay. I didn't, yeah, instead of, but it's still the Sears Tower, but whatever. All right. Um, the next thing up, there was some controversy yesterday because um, there was a top 10 list of singers that came out. And it was an absolute troll job, bro. When, and and at first, because it was a it was a barstool bit. And when I first saw it, I was like, okay, okay, good, good start. Whitney Houston at the top. And then all of a sudden, the whole list just just went to hell, dude. It went to hell in a handbasket. I'm sorry, they have Ma- Mariah Carey first. Whitney Houston second, JoJo third. At first, I, at first, I was like, "Are they talking about JoJo Siwa?" Because <laughs> she's got that new thing that she's pr- promoting for the kids, where they're doing the, um, you know, trying to make the new, the next newest pop star. But no, right. this, this is JoJo. JoJo's a fantastic singer, but top female singers of all time, get out of here. Right. Lady Gaga four, Aretha Franklin five. Beyonce six, Ashley, <laughs> Ashley Simpson seven, Poor Tina Ashley Turner Simpson. eight, Adele nine, and then here comes the doozy, Addison Ray ten. <laughs> they they want- put Addison Ray ten just so it would trend. That was oh genius. yeah, just just to make it pop off. It, it she's the. Uh, she is definitely like the queen of, of, of page views right now. If you include her in anything that you do, it's going to get, uh, it's going to get traffic. It was a joke list. The number of people that took it seriously was, uh, one of those things that makes you wonder if we should even have the internet. Um, I just saw it and laughed and, and moved on, but then it triggered a million serious debates. So I figured why not? Let's, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and try to solidify an actual, uh, list according to what our our preferences are which is tough for me because i want to be objective yeah if it was if it was my 10 f- favorite it would look very different but i want to be objective to say like okay well this is what like great vocal ability plus accomplishment and then it's female singer so you some people are songwriters some people are adept at certain instruments um you know who do you include and so that's what makes this whole thing super interesting to me all right, so my list is compromised. It's is comprised, compromised. <laughs> yeah, it, it might you might think it's compromised, but it's comprised of people who have great music ability, right? Like great vocal ability. A combination of people who are have great vocal ability have put out great iconic um, music or or albums. And also like people who um like who have songs that are important to me. So all right, so what is what is your list, Ralph? Are we going we wanna wanna go uh one 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 by one? Yeah. We start with number ten? Yep. All right, so my number ten, uh, and a big thing that I did on my list is if I feel like there, there's somebody that also deserves to be on that list, but there's a few people in one category. I pick my favorite from that category. Okay. Um, and so my first one was from sort of like the, uh, I guess, rock. Um, to me, the best female uh, rock slash folk vocalist ever is Stevie Nicks. She comes in at number 10 for me. There's a million people that are in that category along with her. But to me, she's the she's the top uh, of, of, of the heap. It's Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. Uh, number 10 for me is Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill doesn't have a lot of music, but between Sister Act and the miseducation of Lauren Hill, which is one of the greatest R&B albums of all time, and the and the fact that whenever I watch the Lakers, my Oregon Ducks, and team teams that I love that like to get in rock fights lately, the only thing I think of 
it could all be so simple, but you'd <laughs> rather make it hard. <laughs> so, uh, Lauren Hill 10. I considered Lauren Hill. I put her in the Stevie Nicks category as part of like a an ensemble type thing. I even had, I, 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 I even uh, was going back and forth between Lauren Hill and Rihanna. Because to me, that you know, that um, you could they, they fit with anything anywhere. Yeah. Um. Uh. But I I, I went with Nix. I I still think that's really good though. I considered Lauren Hill for sure. Uh. Number nine because you you have this huge group of singers who who hit their peak before we were ever born. Uh. That really helped move um the genre forward, and and um you know. Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holiday, all of them, but my favorite of the bunch is Etta James, um, because she she was an incredible singer, but also uh, could get extremely raspy um, yeah. with with her vocals and emotional, and so she is my number nine. Um, my number nine <clears throat> is Pink. Pink uh, is good. Yeah, because dude, Pink has made so much good music. I mean, in the rock space, in kind of the hip hop space, it's like she's got ballads, you know, like, you know, just give me a reason to all. I mean, like she's got so many damn hits and so many songs. I love it. I absolutely love it. So she's my number nine. Pink is a pink is a really good choice. Um, I, very, very good. Um, my number eight is Beyonce. Um, how on earth can you have Beyonce number eight? Well, because it, it comes down to this. So, uh, there was going to be somebody that was part of a group and also had a big solo career, which there's actually a few people, uh, on the, and that, that would fit into that category. Tina Turner would be one of them. And Tina Turner is probably my favorite female artist of all time. When I came down to it, I was like, okay, if, if I'm only going to have really one from this category, cause I got to fit in the great greats at the top. Um, it should be Beyonce over Tina Turner. So that's the best compliment that I can give her. But then people would still look at the, the list and maybe see eight is too low for her. Yeah. When you're, she is incredible. But when you're talking about like revolutionary or, you know, vo maybe in, maybe stylistically, maybe overall as an entertainer, but we're talking about singers. And so I'm keeping it mainly on vocals. And I felt like I was able to justify it because the seven people ahead of her, I feel like are better vocalists. But okay. like I had, I had Beyonce over Christina Aguilera. I had Beyonce over Tina Turner. So I, I, she's still elite. You had Beyonce. Uh, I love B, B, Beyonce and bless, bless her heart, but she's not a better singer than Christina Aguilera. She's got one of the greatest voices of all time. But then, so that's when I kicked in, like, all right, the staying power and okay. the yeah, cultural yeah. relevance and, and, and everything like that. But Beyonce still got an incredible voice, although I do all the time think about that one, um, what, Good Morning America thing that got manipulated, where people thought that she her voice was actually terrible. Yeah. That clip is, and it's manipulated, but it is one of the funniest things in the history of the internet. If you get a chance to ever look that up, uh, Beyonce's uh, GMA vocals, isolated, so funny. All right. Who else you got? Uh, you can do your number eight. Oh, my, my number eight is Anita Baker. Uh, because my mom used to listen to it so much. With all my heart, I love you, baby. It's just good, easy listening, timeless. She's now on, on, Apple, uh, on Apple Music. Dude, yes, she's my number eight. Right on. Uh, this next one was, um, it, it is in place of Lady Gaga because Lady Gaga is cool and everything and her vocals are crazy, but somebody did all this before her and it was Andy Lennox. Andy Lennox was part of, uh, um, the Eurythmics and then her solo career is crazy. She may be the best, uh, white soul singer of all time. Um, probably England's most famous export as far as female, uh s singers she's just incredible that sweet dreams are made of these is one of my you know the best things ever and uh no more i love you like she she doesn't have a ton of like super big hits in in america but she t has to me like just vocally the coolest voice in the world i love annie lennox she's my number seven my number seven is alanis morissette and this one wasn't just pure, pure on vocals this is because jagged little pill 
was like my first introduction to like music like like, like that. I was in ninth grade. I was at Yeah, the cassette? Huh? No, no, yeah, the- CD. Oh, God dang. Yeah, had had the CD. At nine for years it. old. Whoa, it's paying what? 30 no, no, bucks no, 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 no. In in ninth grade. Oh, ninth grade. Okay. Yeah. So and um that's when Jagged Little Pill came out. And isn't it ironic? Don't you think that that album had a super underrated tune on it that was never a hit. I think it was called Not the Doctor. Yeah. Good. That that that's a good album, man. Yep. All right. Uh where where are you at? Number six? Number six, Adele, self explanatory. She just can she can do it all she's not the first to do it all but she can do it all and so to me she belongs within the conversation uh uh, but she's she's in the goat conversation but not the goat yeah and my number six is rihanna because like she's not the best vocalist of all time but her staying power her relevance her influence and she makes good music I mean, that song Stay is amazing. It's one of my favorite, probably 20 favorite, all, one of my all-time 20 favorite female songs by, by female vocalists. Um, obviously, dude, I've been listening to her since uh, Mr. DJ going pawn the replay, like when she was <laughs> innocent Rihanna. And uh, she ain't like that no more. But, uh, but Rihanna to me is like Billionaire, salt. bro, just she's doing it. To me, Rihanna's like salt. Put it on pretty much anything, make anything better. Uh, you can live without it, but it will make pretty much everything better. Yeah. I considered it. I considered and you it. You can't for... get too much of it, too. It's true. <laughs> like That's if you true. OD on it, then you're like, eh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number five? Celine Dion. Um, not necessarily Celine Dion fan, but I get it. Um, for all those times you stand by me. I love Celine Dion, dude. It's just straight up vocals, like just straight up vocals. Just yeah. vocals. She's probably top three. She's yeah. incredible. And it comes out of like a 90 pound frame. It's nuts. Um, yeah, she's my number five. Okay. My number five is Jennifer Hudson. And okay. that's because this is purely off of voice. Her voice is amazing. She's a powerhouse. She's a triple threat. She's dude. This woman, I, I could listen to her sing any of these other people's songs that we named and they would, I might think that the cover could be better. Okay. So, so I mean, like she can cover Whitney, she can cover Beyonce, she can do her own songs, bro. She's she's got something amazing going. And she, I I considered her as well uh, because there's that whole category of people who can sing and act. Um, you know, Barbara Streisand is in that uh, is in that category as well. Um, but it you know it's tough because there's only so many spots. So my number four is Aretha. Um, As far as like powerhouse vocalists, I don't know if it gets much better than her. You can make an argument, maybe even for for number one, Um, for Aretha Franklin. She just is a superstar and brings energy and flash and like pizzazz and and, you know, with the outfit changes and everything, even to this day. Um, But just, I mean, unmistakable voice. And, yeah. and probably legitimately the best to ever do it as a performer. Um, yeah, uh, Tina Turner's up there too. Um, maybe Beyonce, but like it, it it's, um, I, I think Aretha definitely deserves to be top four for sure. All right. Um, and, uh, my number four, this is kind of weird, right? Because I wanted to put Celine Dion here. But I didn't. She's not even on my list. But I do acknowledge that she deserves to be on it for her accomplishment, for her songs. I love Celine Dion, listening to her music. But I put Dolly Parton here. Hell yeah. <laughs> and the reason why I put Dolly Parton here is less about her music, her actual own music, than the fact that she wrote songs that pretty much all of these women have sung. 
Like, so, yeah, yeah so yeah. like her, like, this is like a lifetime achievement award. And because she literally has written some, or at least co-written some of these people's biggest songs that are on this list on mine yeah, and got, yours. I got goosebumps right now. Just thinking about Jolene. That's yeah. an incredible, Jolene, that's incredible. Jolene. I hope the All people right. that are watching the actual like live broadcast of this are enjoying just staring at the bar stool list for 30 minutes. Oh my God. Bro, what are <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Good job, Ralph. Thanks a lot. Because I, I have like eight other tabs pulled up to look up factoids on different female singers. So I just clicked back over and I was like, oh, that's still up. Mm. All right. Okay, where's your number three? Uh my number three, and this is where we get into uh tough territory here. Um, it's Mariah. It's uh I mean, the whole, like, high-low octaves, runs, dominating the 90s, switching up her style, anything that a lot of these people have tried to do, she's already done. Um, she owns Christmas. She owns Literally funerals. Literally owns Christmas. <laughs> she, she owns Christmas. She owns funerals. What, she owns, like... What song does she own for funerals? Oh, come on, man. One Sweet Day. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. That made me cry just talking about it. But like uh she also has um she just had a million hits in the 90s and she's kind of like floated up not not floated on reputation is maybe not the right way, but she dominated. She dominated her era. She doesn't need to do anything else. Uh the the fantasy that album dropping was yeah. I mean, that was huge. That was, that was enormous. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's, it, she could easily be to me, number one. Um, but just pure ability at the, at the peak of what she could do. I don't know if there's ever been anybody better. Yeah, dude, she is definitely up there. Um, my number three this is another split because Ma Mariah deserved to be on there, but Adele, Adele being a little bit of a prisoner of the moment. And I can listen to her for at this point in time, cover to cover, cover to cover every album, me, my kids all the way up from two, all the way up to 21. Listen to it all together. Nobody has to switch the music. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about, so we're just, we're, we're going to go number two here. Yep. Uh, this is probably going to be my most controversial one. I don't care. Country music deserves to be represented. It is the, uh, it is one of the oldest forms of popular music in American culture. And so you have to figure, okay, who is the best female country and Western vocalist ever? Um, when it's just pure vocals, like Dolly Parton's great, but, it's not going to be her. You have absolute powerhouses like Martina McBride. Um, and, you know, there, there's plenty of people. There's plenty of people. Faith you, Hill's a big time. Faith Hill is big time. Or you could go with the OGs, you know, like uh, um, Patsy Cline and, yep. and, and, uh, and stuff like that. But to me, uh, if you're just going to say singer, somebody who can, who essentially I think does, could do what anybody in country has ever done, maybe even better than them, is Carrie Underwood. Oh my God, dude, her voice is like, mwah, is. And if you, if you want proof, if you're gonna get mad that I said Carrie Underwood at number two, what you need to do is you need to go to YouTube, and you need to Google how great thou thou art, Vince Gill. You need to Google how great thou art, Vince Gill, and witness what might be the best live vocal performance ever in yeah, any genre dude, she's, ever. Dude, she's a powerhouse. Um, my number two is Beyonce from Houston, Texas, from Texas, baby, where we get hectic, baby. Yeah. So there's no under like her cultural impact, the amount of albums that she sold. She's so relevant in so many areas. So yeah, Beyonce is my number two. Yeah. I mean, she changed the meaning of surfboard. So surfboard, surfboard. <laughs> All right, number one's number one. I mean, it shouldn't be controversial. It's Whitney Houston. And I... Yeah. 
I didn't, yeah, I, didn't, and, I didn't finish that note right. <laughs> you tried. Um, no, what, what can you, this can't say anything bad about Whitney Houston. No. Like she, she was, uh, the best, the absolute best. And, and the fact that like being that good could still convert into like mass pop appeal. Yeah. Pretty wild. Yep. Um, because I'm sure that we, we've never even heard of the, the top 50 female vocalists ever. They could be living in some village in Finland and we'd never even know, you know, who, who they are. Yeah. Or they could be in a, they could be uh, like CC Winans or something in, in a genre of music that doesn't necessarily have, correct you know, ma- mass appeal. But she appealed to everyone and yeah. could do anything and uh was awesome she was awesome yep so uh those are our top 10 female singers well who's your number one whitney, whitney houston okay i'm just making yeah. sure because yeah you, you had no celine no mariah not even in the top 10 so i'm just making sure oh, okay that you you at least had that whitney i houston that i, that I didn't 10. put 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 like sarah borales as number one i want to write you a love song because you asked for it because you need one no i would more expect you to be like look uh vanessa carlton because white chicks is my favorite movie Uh, (laughs) make my way downtown (laughs) who just missed you i want to miss you who finished on the outside looking in sarah borales are you serious? Because that's one of my favorite songs, dude. I I love that damn song. That's hilarious. My, mine is uh uh uh. I got yelled at by my wife for not having Karen Carpenter on here. Um, but India Ari, India Ari to me is one of the best singers of all time. Mm. Look up uh, "Ready for Love." No, no, no. I'm ready. I, oh I, my I know, gosh. Dude, I'm a I'm a huge India. Don't Ar- fin- Ari don't fan. finish. I'll fall in love with you, George. Oh oh, I definitely yeah. They can't sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so dude i i, I think she's a f- fabulous singer i mean and then when you get to some of the older singers love a ton of them as well like at a james you put her on there love so many of those as well uh, but those are our top 10 singers now here is something a little more controversial because uh the kyle rittenhouse trial is in jury deliberations and I was asked by a friend. He was like, George, I think you're a smart guy. You always have intelligent things to say about things. I was like, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And so I knew that something something was was coming. This is a Jewish man. We uh, we uh, talk. He's a lawyer. And he's putting he's covering you in butter before he threw you in the pan. Right. <laughs> so I was like, OK, what's up, man? He was like, OK, can you please explain to me? why LeBron James and so many other black people care about this Kyle Rittenhouse trial so much. Like, why is it such a big deal? And I was like, oh, no, no. no." He he said, why is it such a big deal to LeBron and to other celebrities? And I was, and my response was because it's a big deal to black people in general. He was like, but why said, okay, Here is the truth is that the first thing is black people believe that if Kyle Rittenhouse were black and he were walking around with an assault rifle in the middle of a protest of white people or any other people that he would have been stopped by the police asked questions or like that. It wouldn't have even gotten to where it got to first thing is, And the second thing is, is that he would not be defended by so many people who are like, oh, he's just a kid and this, all all of this bull. And so it's the frustration in the inequity in the system that makes black people so interested in it. And then the fact that you can get up there and give crocodile tears and, and the fact this, this kid's mother drove him across state lines 
and the inevitable result happened. Why did she drive him across there, Ralph? Why? That's a great question. That's a great question. When what did she what, think was going to happen? Right. What the 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 purpose of them going there was what happened. And so the idea though It was certainly at least to engage in 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 the process of protest and counter protest. Yes. Yes, but when you show up with a weapon, that usually escalates things. And and yes, he did get hit with a skateboard, all of that stuff. But the and the 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 kid with the, the uh, guy with the gun that he uh, shot. Okay, you can you can say okay, I felt for my life, blah blah blah. But then the other things, he would not have been treated like this if he were black, and that's why black people yeah. are so interested in it because it's it just feels so unfair in the situation. Because there was intent why he went there. There was intent yeah, with yeah. the mother. And it's such a self-defeating circular argument, too. You could say he shot someone who had a gun because he felt like he was in fear for his life. Therefore, that person getting shot is not only justifiable but understandable. So then what you're saying is him showing up with a gun could have got him killed, and it would be not only justifiable but understandable. Yes. Exactly, because had he got killed, somebody hitting he would have been a martyr. Right, but which means somebody hitting you with a skateboard is not only justifiable, but understandable. Bingo. And that's why I haven't really said too much about this, because the whole thing seems to me like everybody was there and seemed to be about that action. If you show up to a place with a gun, you're... What what do what what do gun safety advocates, Second Amendment advocates say about carrying a gun? Like uh, if you're the, gonna if it, you're gonna carry it, you better be ready to use it. Correct. Correct. And they mean like correctly and safely and yeah and yada yada yada. But like the mindset is if you're out there with a long gun, you're probably there to to get yours. I mean it's it. it why go, drive there with a gun? Why? Yep. And so I, I don't know. I, this whole thing has been super perplexing to me, but it is interesting that you bring up the conversation of why this matters so much to uh, not only black people, but conservatives yeah. seem to have a, are heavily invested in this. Why yeah. we, if this was a black sides, kid, would, would, would they have dumped so much money into his defense? If he was conservative? Yes. I don't know. It, we 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 know the answer to that. Um, but, all right, but, uh, you you there's there's been quite a bit of tokenism of like, yeah. hey, if we if we could get, it, you know, if we could put our money behind uh, a, a black Second Amendment advocate, I I don't know, man. The whole thing is just uh, you. Would, I'm a gun would, owner, so I'm a Second Amendment person, but I under but I understand at the same time that while I want my guns, I I actually have more fun with 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 my guns then i then i do think i need it for defense if that makes sense like going out shooting learning how to shoot shooting at targets moving things all of that stuff for like sport but the idea though that i need it for protection like yeah that's that's there but i think that that's probably the least likely option for me needing or w- wanting to have firearms but if so, you saw that, if you saw that ten miles away, there was a bunch of like outdoor hullabaloo going on over, you know, uh, social and economic issues, and you told your wife like, "Hey, drive me down there. Let me get my gun. Drive me down there," and then you came back with a couple of scalps, like you're, you're probably gonna get in deep shit. Like yes. I, I just, I, Antonio Pierce almost went to jail for driving Plaxico Burris to the hospital after he accidentally shot himself in a club and Plaxico Burris did jail time. Yes. And we're talking about Kyle Rittenhouse potentially being a hero and his mom not getting in any trouble whatsoever. Bro. It, Just, it's, oh, it seems like there's a huge disconnect here and I want to understand it, but for the most part, I don't want to try to get too, I, I don't, I don't want to have my emotions about this country dictated over a trial that a ton of media was put behind when there are a, 
hundreds of people on trial for other stuff that that don't even belong on trial right now all across the country and it just it's weird that we pick these cultural totems to like everybody choose your side and you know and when we have no control over the outcome and when we probably know what the outcome is anyway yep exactly all right now it is time for the best of social media where we literally show you the best things from social media uh first thing up uh is speaking of conservative media laura ingram had a guest on and they got they had a confusing uh interaction politics and all those woke storylines in so many shows today you know i was watching an episode of uh you where measles came up wait 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 when did i mention measles i don't know it was on you what 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 was on me what are you talking about right what is the, the even hearing what i'm the saying i never had the measles was on you we never did a, a we never did a measles and vaccine episode. Am I, is this a joke? I, know. I don't even know what it you're was, talking about. It was on you. It was on you. I've never had, Raymond, I've never had measles. What are you talking about? This is stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You. What is you. About? It's called you. I've never done a show on measles. I, I just completely give up. We gotta get it's out of It's a show I, I give up. called you on Netflix. There's a show called Laura Ingham on Netflix. What are you Never mind. About? I'm moving on to Adele. I can't explain this to What's you. The pop about? singer. <laughs> Bro, that can't be real. Is that real? Bro, Laura Ingram isn't the type to do bits like that. That's an incredible. If that's a bit, that's an incredible bit. Yes, that that was a top tier acting job. If that's a bit, but that's not a bit. I don't think that's a bit. There's se- so I just looked it up. It says I watch you. So I got it, <laughs> but it's, I guess, I guess it, they're saying that that guy, uh, Raymond Arroyo that she was talking to, um, that it might be, I don't know. I, I, if it was a bit, if, if it was a bit, bravo. Yes. Bravo. <laughs> they it really was... pulled that shit off. That was, that was, I mean, it, and I know that you can't say that someone who people think is disgusting for a million different reasons is objectively funny for something that they did. But if it was a bit, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, now, staying in that lane, uh, my pillow guy uh, is interviewing Donald Trump. And this is very confusing. First of all, Mike Lin- Lin- Lindell just tries to suck him off the whole time. But... <laughs> Why is Donald Trump we want wearing a tuxedo? A strong military, mm-hmm. great education for our children, a nice house to live yeah. in. Uh, you know, it's so basic. Common it's sense. So simple. Common sense things. And, and they fight us. It's. Uh... Why is he wearing a tuxedo? Ah, there is that new Home Alone sequel. Maybe he was doing a, uh, some reshoots or something. I don't know. Bro, I was like, th- I won't be watching that interview. Um, I think that, that, that's where he belongs. With oh, oh one, with one, with with the interviews with my, my pillow guy, they're both product talkers. Yeah, I just don't one understand. Of them, like, one of them what, got to be president, but like, is Donald Trump trying to just re- remain relevant since he can't be on social media, or is he like? Well, Donald Trump's relevant. Dr- Donald Trump. Well, I, to him, I, I I don't know his mindset. He he seems to be back to acting the way he was for decades before he was ever president, which is taking any opportunity to talk to anyone about any subject but like i don't know that if they, th- those two together just make sense to me mike lindell is what donald trump wants to be and yes. donald trump is what mike lindell wants to be mike lindell is a successful businessman like uh, and that's he, what donald trump really wants to be when he grows that's up. that's what he wanted to be with trump water trump steaks all you know almost everything outside of his his hotels absolutely and mike lindell wants the 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 political clout of you know, so it's a it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And they're like Mike Lindell's like one of those birds that picks the alligator's teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets bit. All right. Um, all right. You guys, that is Reister or Wrong for the day. I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amsden. Leave a five star rating. Tell a friend. Peace out. Catch you guys on Friday.